in the event we had somebody coming towards us that we didn't know who it was. Normally we'd have a target aircraft for us uh, today for the display. We're going to have him ready for tomorrow. Uh, I had a little weather problems coming out of Colorado today, but uh, he's going to be all set for tomorrow. We're going to show you a few F-16 uh, capabilities before we get into what we'd actually do with NORAD. Well, we look forward to that, and if you look off to your left, you'll see that F-16 is turning inbound. And I think we're going to get a high-speed pass out of this F-16. I think he's going to enjoy the next couple minutes where he gets to uh, make some noise, as you said. We have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Crabb, call sign CHAP, flying from the 120 Fighter Squadron at Buckley Air Force Base in Denver, Colorado. And you're about to see him make his entrance left to right. this uh, jet belongs to? Absolutely. It's a uh, 120 fighter squadron. So it is a squadron in the United States Air National Guard. They are known as the unit of first. They have a wide pedigree of uh, great accomplishments accomplishments through their career. 1923, they were the first federal recognized Air National Guard squadron flying the old biplane Jennings. Since then, they have flown a multitude of aircraft in the United States inventory, P-51s, F-80s, F-86s, F-100 Super Sabre in Vietnam, A-7, and their current version of the F-16, which they've been flying now for uh, nearly 30 years, I'd say. Now, the F-16 isn't the only fighter aircraft that NORAD uses for these intercepts that you've been talking about. No, it is not. We have a multitude of assets around the uh, both Canada and the United States. The F-16 here, F-15. In Canada, you see the uh, CF-18 doing an intercept. Eventually, you'll see the F-35, which the U.S. is already starting to bring into their inventory. Look at this. Coming in from the left, our F-16 Viper. in Vietnam in 1968, flying over 6,000 sorties and 10,000 combat hours. In addition, they uh, have done numerous uh, Middle East deployments, uh, Iraq, Noble Eagle uh, missions here in uh, the United States and Canada, and they have just been a uh, tremendous Air National Guard unit to the uh, defense of both, both countries that we're here representing. All right, I think we're gonna get another pass by this F-16. Uh, Cameron, we're going to take a little bit of a break here somewhere in the middle of this performance because we have some commercial airliners that we need to get into the airport and then we'll talk in a little bit more detail about NORAD's mission with interception. That sounds absolutely great. We look forward to it. We're told by the Airbus team led by Trent Stenmark in the NAV Canada Tower that we're about five minutes away from those commercial airliners inbound to the airport. So we get a treat. stats here about the F-16 at uh, sea level its maximum speed is Mach 1.2 if you uh, do the Canadian exchange on that that works out to just over 1400 kilometers an hour up at altitude it can fly as fast as Mach 2 that's just over 2100 kilometers per hour in a clean configuration has a range of about 2000 or so miles but that's of course whether you've got a tailwind, a headwind, or usually it's about endurance in the end. It absolutely is. Sometimes you even have a tanker that's airborne, it's gonna help you along. different countries, including the United States. They built over 4,600 F-16s in general. So in this case, we're going to pretend our imaginary aircraft, D-1, 
did not see him or did not think that it was for him. It was just a coincidence. We have a military airplane up here. NORAD now is starting to get a little, little more nervous. We've got air defense sectors uh, around uh, both countries, rolling through the headquarters of Colorado Springs, and people are starting to get a little jumpy as to what's happening. So we're going to up our game a little bit. We're going to come in, uh, take tactical action a little bit further. In this case, we're going to do a maneuver called a headbutt. Now, normally we would be using flares. We're going to cross the aircraft's nose. We do it in a safe manner. We always, uh, we're always we not doing it out here to have cause accidents or anything like that. But we're going to simulate the flare use with the use of afterburners. And again, intended to get the attention of the offending aircraft. So you're going to see a few wing rocks as he comes in. They're not going to work, but then he's going to blast across his uh, the imaginary nose with his afterburners lit, simulating the use of flares. There's the rocking of the wings again, folks. that if they have to take tactical action, they are ready to do so. So they'll carry a collection of missiles, and at worst, they'll also have a gun on the aircraft that they can use. What you're supposed to do as a pilot. Do your research, do your mission planning in advance. We don't want to do this. We will do it if we have to, but ultimately, being a pilot, there's responsibilities that come with that, and we ask you guys to adhere to those. So as Chaff brings the aircraft in, I'm going to wrap this up from our end. For 66 years, NORAD has monitored the airspace in and around North America for airborne threats. NORAD personnel at the headquarters in Colorado, the NORAD regions in Alaska, Canada, and the continental United States, all four air defense sectors and at the wings and bases across the U.S. and Canada that support flight operations serve every day to keep you safe, which is why at NORAD we say we have the watch. Let's have a big round of applause for our NORAD demonstration and thank you, Dimit, for coming up here on the announcer stand to give us a little bit more insight as to this whole program and what it's about. Absolutely, my pleasure. Look forward to showing this uh, with real aircraft or another real aircraft tomorrow.